Greetings to you all guys. Welcome to our Mathematics Grade 12 Revision class. We are focusing today on graphs of cubic functions, particularly how to determine the coordinates of the turning points. How to determine the coordinates of the turning points. How to determine the coordinates of the turning point. I have one question here from one of the past examination papers as an example. Sketched is the graph of f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 11x plus 30. a and b are the turning points of f. Determine the coordinates of a and b, which are the turning points of the function. Now, before we go on to the calculations we need to do, remember, every time you are doing mathematics, the most important thing to learn is the method, the idea that informs the answer. So don't place your attention too much on the answer, but place your attention on how to determine the answer. The thinking behind the answer is what is important. Now let's look at this graph that is drawn here. Now from negative infinity up to point A, we can see that the graph is increasing. This whole section here, f is increasing on this labeled part. Then from point A, f is now decreasing. Then from point B, f is increasing again. So the graph is increasing, then decreasing, and then increasing. At point A, which is the turning point, and at point B, which is also the turning point. Now, these two points, we call them turning points or the local maximum or local minimum. Or we also call them stationary points. At the two points, at the turning points, the gradient is always zero. So, from increasing to decreasing, the gradient becomes zero before the graph changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So basically, in short, at the turning point, the gradient is always equal to zero. Then we need to remember and remind ourselves, what is gradient? Gradient is the derivative. If you differentiate a function, what you get there is uh, the gradient of the function. So at the turning point, the gradient is equal to zero. What is the gradient? The gradient is the turning point, uh, is the, um, the derivative. The gradient is the derivative because the gradient at the turning point is equal to zero. It means the derivative at the turning point is equal to zero. Now that gives us the method that we can use to determine the coordinates of the turning point. So to determine the coordinates of the turning point, we differentiate the equation of the function and equate the derivative to zero because the derivative is the gradient. At the turning point, the gradient is equal to zero. So in this question, f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 11x plus 30. We differentiate it. The derivative is 3x squared minus 8x minus 11. Then we equate this to zero and we solve for x. Please appreciate that this equation is a quadratic equation. It is extremely important for any learner grade 11 and 12 to make sure that your understanding of equations is as perfect as possible because without understanding how to solve equations, it may make it a bit challenging to get good marks in your examinations. So we have got our quadratic equation here that we can solve by quadratic formula, by completing the square or by factorization. In this particular example, this has been solved by, qua, by factorization because it's possible to factorize it. x is equal to 3.67 or x is equal to negative 1. Those are my two values that, that come from this bracket here. So the first bracket 
gives me x is equal to 3.67 and the second bracket gives me x is equal to negative 1. Then my next calculation will be I have to calculate the corresponding values of y in this equation. So I go on to substitute the value of x in the, in the equation of f. So when x is equal to negative 1, what will be the value of y? When x is equal to 3.67, what will be the value of y? And that calculation gives me the coordinates of the turning point. So to quickly summarize, to determine the coordinates of the turning point, we differentiate the equation of the graph and equate the derivative to 0 and solve for x. Why are we equating the derivative to 0? It's because the derivative is the gradient. And at the turning points, the gradient is always equal to 0. All right. Uh, that is our concept of calculating the coordinates of turning points. Now, I have got another example that I would like us to quickly have a look at from another past examination paper. The figure represents the graph of y is equal to 2x cubed plus px squared plus qx plus 3. Point f, which is 2 and negative 9, is a local minimum point. Show that p is equal to negative 5 and q is equal to negative 4. Now, in this particular exam, learners were given 6 marks for doing this calculation. Now, what is the important concept we need to remember about the turning points? At the turning points, the gradient is always equal to 0. That's very much important. So, in this particular case, we are given the coordinates of the turning point one turning point which is a two which is point f two and negative nine now to solve this problem we need the idea that at the stationary point the gradient is always equal to zero so we differentiate this equation and after differentiating we equate the derivative to zero and once we equate it to zero the value of x in that equation is equal to 2 because the gradient is 0 at the turning point. And at the turning point, the x value given here is equal to 2. So we differentiate, equate to 0, and replace x with 2. Now that one simplified becomes an equation in terms of p and q. Once we simplify it to its simplest form, we, are, we can leave it like that. We are no longer to do anything more. Then the second calculation that we may need to do. Now we have the coordinates of point F. Now the, pot, the coordinates of point F are given as 2 and negative 9. Each time we get coordinates on a graph, the two coordinates satisfy the equation of that particular graph. So it means in this equation, when x is equal to 2, y is equal to negative 9. We can substitute negative 9 in place of y and 2 in place of x. Then simplify the resulting expression. If we simplify that equation, we get another equation that is expressed in terms of p and q. Now equation 1 that we got from the previous calculation and equation 2 that we now have, they become simultaneous equations that we need to solve to determine the values of P and Q. So important, how did we arrive here? We are given the coordinates of uh, the turning point. So how do you deal with the turning point? You differentiate the equation, equate the derivative to 0. Once we equate to 0, the value of x in that equation is the x value given at the turning point. So we differentiated this equation, equate the derivative to 0, substitute x with the 2 because the x coordinate of the turning point is equal to 2. 
that will give us equation number one. Then the second equation, the coordinates given. Now we got the original equation. The first value is the x coordinate, which means x is equal to 2. The second value is the y coordinate, which means y is equal to negative 9. So in this equation, we replace x with 2, y is with negative 9, and simplify. That will give us another equation that is written in terms of p and q. After that, we now solve the two equations simultaneously. They can be solved by any method of your choice. So solving these equations, they give us the needed values here. We need to find P. P is equal to negative 5. And we need to find Q. Q is equal to negative 4. Then our question for 6 marks is answered. So basically, we need to keep in mind, remember when you answer any maths question, you go through any past examination paper, what you need to ask yourself is, what exactly did I learn from doing this particular question? It's not just going to be doing, 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 and then at the end of the day, you remember nothing. So in this particular one, we learn that given a coordinate or coordinates of any point, the coordinates will satisfy the equation of the function. So we have got the coordinates of the turning point. That Those coordinates will do two things for us. The first one, we can substitute them into the equation and that will give us an equation in terms of p and q. And the x value of the turning point, we can substitute that uh, coordinate into the derivative after equating the derivative to 0 because at the turning point, the gradient is equal to 0. All right, that will be it from me for today. Uh, if you need any help with mathematics or you want me to send you some notes or some information on any topic that you are not understanding please you are welcome to contact me using the number that is shown i'm available on whatsapp we have a lot of material that you can use to make sure that your learning goes well and everything is fine blessings to you all please remember to like and share and comment and let's hear your views and what else we may do to assist you blessings to you